We're never going to run out of incredible artifact discoveries to show you in this channel. That's for the best, because we know that you're never going to get tired of seeing them. We've got another fantastic video lined up for you right now, full of remarkable discoveries from all over the world. They might be small or large, hundreds of years old or thousands of years old, but the one thing they all have in common is that they're incredible. Would you queue around the block to go and see a couple of ancient jars? I think we can all agree that they'd have to be very special jars for us even to consider such a thing. In this case, we're talking about a pair of ancient Chinese jars that have been drawing enormous crowds ever since they were put on display at the famous Parthasarathi Temple in Chenya, India. The stunning ceramics are believed to be a little over 1,500 years old. It's said that they've been here since the temple itself was built, but it's only within the past year that they've been available for the public to marvel at. The jars are enormous, each one standing almost five feet tall and two and a half feet wide at their widest point. Experts think that they were used to store brined mangoes, which were once used for daily offerings in the temple's kitchen. The elders among the community say that this practice continued until the start of the 21st century. Nobody knows how these jars arrived in Aranmula in the first place, which adds to their air of mystery. Speaking of all things Chinese, Chinese culture is even more synonymous with tea drinking than British culture is. In fact, the Chinese have been drinking tea for far longer than the Brits. We can prove that with this next discovery. It's an ancient Chinese tea bowl from the Warring States period, and it still contains traces of the tea that was poured into it 2,400 years ago. The bowl was found by archaeologists in a tomb site within the ancient capital of the Shu Kingdom in what's now Shu Chang in Shandong Province. Legend has it that tea was invented as a medical treatment by Emperor Shen Nung in the year 2737 BCE, although whether that's true or not is open to debate. The first reference to Chinese people planting and cultivating tea appears in an almanac called Chai Chao Shang, which was written something like 2250 years ago. We can assume that it was common practice by then. This bowl, in which the tea traces are little more than charred residue, is the oldest direct evidence of tea drinking in the country, and as far as we're aware, the wider world. Let's move away from China and go to Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates, where a stunning Roman era figurine of a mythical creature known as a griffin was found in June 2021. The discovery was made in the Maleha area, where archaeologists say it's part of a censer featuring three statues arranged in a circular shape around a bowl that was presumably used for burning incense. Their assessment of the artifact, which is in remarkably good condition, is that it's a product of the first century. Sharjah was never Roman territory, but historians have taken the find as evidence of an ancient trade network that existed between Sharjah and the nearest Roman provinces 2,000 years ago. This is a part of the world that is still largely an undiscovered country, as far as archaeologists are concerned, so this could be the beginning of a whole new spate of discoveries in the region. If there's one ancient Roman relic in Sharjah, there are likely to be others, although it's unlikely there will be many that are in such good condition after all these years as this charming sculpture. The Battle of Visby is a legendary conflict that happened in July 1361. It happened on the Swedish Baltic island of Gotland and was fought between the invading forces of the Danish king and the local Gutnish country Yeoman. The military force of the Danish army was vastly superior to that of the locals, and so the Danes won the day. The conflict, however, didn't come without heavy losses on the Danish side as indicated by the mass graves that archaeologists have been excavating for the past few years. It was within one of those mass graves that this iron gauntlet was found in August 2014. What's puzzled archaeologists about the find is that the gauntlet appears to be undamaged. Battle armor like this was valuable, 
So even when people died, it was common practice for their undamaged weapons and armor to be passed on to somebody else. For this gauntlet to be buried with its owner might be a sign that the warrior was held in high regard, and thus nobody else was deemed as being worthy of wearing their gauntlet. It's since been used as a template by a modern-day company that manufactures replica battle armor. A little piece of Indian history was found in November 2021, when this stone carving was found in the tiny village of Tegarsi in the Urupi district. The discovery is a four-paneled, intricately carved stone inscription that has been called a hero stone. The name comes from the fact that it displays a war scene involving a significant victory seemingly achieved by an individual soldier. The stone is thought to come from the time of the Vijayanagar Empire, which existed between 1336 and 1646. In all four panels, the anonymous hero is shown fighting against different people with a sword, winning each time. The discovery was made not far from Kambalagade, which is the scene of a popular annual buffalo race. The top panel, positioned above all the others, shows the apparently martyred hero standing in front of a lingam of Lord Shiva with a bull to his left. There's also an inscription on the same panel, although sadly, the text is too badly weathered to be deciphered. Historians aren't sure whether the hero of the story is a real person or a fictional one, and sadly, it might never be possible to find out. The history of the Philippines prior to the arrival of Spanish colonists is something of a mystery to historians. It's a part of the world that hasn't seen enough activity from archaeologists in the past, but that's beginning to change. Recently, archaeologists at the Balangasai archaeological site in Bolanao, Pangasinan, came across this decorated human skull. The precise location of the find is considered to be sensitive information, so archaeologists haven't given it out because they don't want to encourage looters. The skull still has all of its teeth, and upon those teeth are golden decorations that look a little like fish scales. The effect isn't entirely dissimilar to the golden grill that some rap stars have in their mouths. The only way to insert the gold decorations would have been to drill directly into the teeth and insert gold pegs. If the work had been carried out while this person was still alive, it would probably have been very painful. It was called Pusad, and may have been a way in which a member of the societal elite visually demonstrated their status. Other members of the pre-Hispanic Filipino social elite sometimes stained their teeth red and black for reasons we don't yet understand. It's sometimes said that the pen is mightier than the sword. We're not sure about that, but we do know that the pen can sometimes be more interesting than the sword. As proof, Here's the oldest ink pen in Europe. It was discovered during an archaeological excavation in Burren, Ireland in December 2021. The pen was found inside a 10th century settlement known as a cashel, which is thought to have remained in use until the 17th century and hosted a wealthy populace. The design of the pen is innovative, with a hollow bone barrel topped with a copper alloy nib. You can think of it as a distant cousin to the modern biro, tests have indicated that the pen was made during the 11th century. That makes it a surprising discovery in the context of its location, because it's long been thought that literacy in Ireland was reserved for the highest ranking members of the church, rather than everyday people. Even with that in mind, feather quills were the preferred method of writing at the time. The pen appears to be a one-off and leaves us with unanswered questions about its owner. The most obvious place to go looking for incredible artifacts is inside a museum. Go to the Archaeological Museum of Sitaya in Crete, for example, and you'll find the Chryselephantine statue known as the Pilacastro Chorus. Experts believe it belongs to the late Minoan period of 3,500 years ago, meaning that it's a product of the Bronze Age. The statue is only 20 inches tall but that's considered large in the context of other Minoan statuettes. The fact that it's made from gold and ivory strongly suggests that it's a cult image and was either used in worship or worshipped directly. If so, it's the only known artifact of its kind from the Minoan civilization. 
The bulk of the figurine's body is made from the teeth of hippopotami, wrapped in gold foil, with the exception being the head, which is made from serpentinite. It's so detailed that even the tendons of the feet and the veins of the hand are visible. Some historians have suggested that it might be an early depiction of a young Zeus, who eventually became the greatest god of the Greek civilization. But that can't be proven. Our ancient ancestors experimented with many different forms of armor on the battlefield, constantly searching for a material that offered the right balance between protection and flexibility. Before metal and bronze armor became popular, the Assyrians experimented with armor made from leather. Here we see an example of their leather armor. It's about 2,700 years old and was discovered in China. The amount of work that went into creating the armor is incredible. It's made from more than 5,000 small pieces and 140 large leather scales, along with laces and lining also made from leather. The total weight of 10 pounds would have been heavy but lighter and easier to move around in than almost any other option that would have been available at the time. How it came to be in China is unknown. Its owner could have been an Assyrian mercenary working in China, or it could have been a Chinese soldier who looted the armor from a defeated Assyrian foe. Some historians have even speculated that its presence in China could indicate a hitherto unknown technological exchange between the two regions. It can be extremely difficult for archaeologists to work out what's just a pattern and what's an attempt at written communication when we're dealing with the inscriptions of some of our earliest ancestors. For that reason, we don't know whether the Danube Valley Civilization script is actually a written language or not. If it is, it's likely to be the oldest written language in the world. This mostly unknown culture lived in the Balkan region more than 7,500 years ago and was considerably more advanced than most of the civilizations around it, excelling in areas like leather processing, weaving, and spinning. They might also have been the first to invent the wheel. Many of their artifacts are covered in similar-looking engraved symbols that historians suspect could be a type of writing. There are enough different characters to qualify as a language, and the pattern they're laid out in follows most of the conventions of written language. The problem is that nobody can translate it, and we are not even sure whether there's truly any information within it to translate. Until we find the Danube Valley equivalent of the Rosetta Stone, this may always remain a mystery. We've looked at some ancient leather armor, so now let's check out some ancient stone armor. The armor was discovered inside the tomb of China's first emperor, also known as Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. The site is best known for being the place where the world-famous terracotta warriors were discovered and has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987. The mausoleum is enormous, and archaeologists are nowhere near finishing their work there yet. The stone armor is so intricate that it could almost be considered a work of art, with each suit made of over 600 pieces of stone, connected by bronze wires to ensure the person inside it can move easily. The discovery, which happened in 2013, marked the first time that Qin Dynasty armor had ever been found, but there's no shortage of it now. 87 suits of stone armor have been identified inside the mausoleum so far but those at the scene suspect that there might be as many as 6,000. The sheer amount of armor in the tomb is yet another sign of how powerful Qin Shi Huang was and what a massive impact his death had on the nation. In May 2019, a rusty old anchor was dragged up out of the water by a trawler close to the coast of Cornwall in the United Kingdom. That might not sound like an interesting discovery, and it wouldn't be if the anchor is all there was to it. But archaeologists are increasingly convinced that the anchor is a significant clue in the search for the most valuable undiscovered shipwreck in the world. If they're correct in their suspicions, the anchor comes from the wreck of the Merchant Royal. That's a British merchant ship of the 17th century that was lost in a storm close to Land's End in September 1641. At the time of the sinking, the vessel was carrying a cargo of gold and silver bullion 
worth hundreds of millions of pounds. When adjusted for inflation, the cargo would today be worth tens of billions. The anchor comes from the right period and is unusually large. Only a few large vessels would have had an anchor this big, and the Merchant Royal was one of them. It's an anchor from the right time, it's of the right size, and it's in the right place. Salvage companies have spent decades looking for the Merchant Royal, known as the El Dorado of the Seas, but its discovery might now be closer than ever. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.